guys, Christian Knight here for Carp3 TV, back for another edition of Strategy. Today we're going to talk about game theory, so we talked to Vanessa Russo, who studied the topic deeply at Duke. We asked her what game theory is and how it applies to poker. There are a bunch of different ways that it applies to poker. Uh, just a quick summary of what it actually is. It's not like studying how to play Monopoly in chess. It's um, when you take complex scenarios and reduce them to mathematics, using variables to represent elements, in the case of poker, of human tendencies, like the tendency of a human uh, particular player to bluff would be reduced to a variable. The tendency of a particular player to continue post-flop when they were the pre-flop raiser would be reduced to a variable. Now, um, you can apply this to poker fundamentally in two different ways, in my opinion. Uh, the first way is it can be used actually uh, using some of the biological game theory models that have been developed in the past. We can actually use it to help us conceive of the poker community as a whole um, and how the poker community changes over time. Um, in fact, I use in one of my game theory clinics, I actually use a diagram showing how in enemy cells will invade healthy blood cells um, and they'll begin to spread and take over and then gradually as the human immune system kicks in, they fight back against the, the enemy cells and it goes back and forth. I actually use that to, I use that in a cycle, absolutely, and I use that as an analogy for the poker community, how the poker community is constantly changing between being filled with uh, co cooperative players and deceptive players. And uh, so, the, so it can be used conceptually in that way. It can also be used um, more specifically in every single hand that you play to, uh, to help you account for more and more variables in each decision you have to make. Vanessa says that there are a number of ways in which game theory applies, and she even gives us a few tips on how we can become more familiar with the topic. There's honestly the applications are so many when it comes to poker. When I teach, I teach a one-day boot camp, and I and I in that boot camp that I teach, and if people are interested in that, they should check out bigslickbootcamp.com. But in my one-day camp, uh, I mean, I only managed to skim the very surface of it in in one camp, and I mean, um, there's just so much that you can learn from game theory. If, if uh, people are interested, they should um, check out one of two books, either the Art, the Art of War by Sun Tzu, and when they're reading that book, take the word war and replace it with tournament poker. And without even realizing that you're learning game theory, you will be. And the other thing they could do is actually go out and get a game theory textbook that's used in you know any college. And, uh, and then they can use that to help them understand the basic game theoretical models and frameworks for looking at situations, like the prisoner's dilemma, for instance, a very popular one, and, and all these have applications to poker and will help you shortcut often time-consuming logical situations that you'll encounter. Well, to give viewers a taste of game theory, we asked her to explain the raise limp ratio. So the RL ratio deals with that second half of game theory's broad application to poker when I said you can use it to deal with specific variables that represent humans' behaviors and tendencies. So um, in an article that I wrote, uh, which you can find on the internet or I think on my website or my MySpace, um, I reduced the tendency of a player to raise versus their tendency to limp in the form of a ratio. Because, you know, obviously in poker, you're never going to do in the same situation over time the same thing every single time. You're going to mix it up. You have to in order to be unpredictable. So we know that, you know, no player is going to 100% of the time raise or 100% of the time fold given a set of circumstances. Or I mean limp, given a set of circumstances. So instead, we like to represent their tendency to do that as a ratio. Maybe this player raises 80% of the time and limps 1% of the time. So their R to L ratio would be 4 to 1. In that particular type of player, you're going to play differently than a player who, say, has a ratio of 1 to 4. Um, and so understanding the RL ratio can help you frame your, your own strategies and respond to get different situations. It can also help you respond to others given what their particular RL ratio might be. Um, it's not necessarily whether they'd be tight because we did, that ratio doesn't express the frequency of hands they're playing. But what it does say is it, it would say that that player is aggressive because aggressive players tend to bet their hands more strongly when they play, whereas passive players tend to um, allow others to take the aggressive stance in the hand and they just kind of sit back. So it would definitely tell us that player is aggressive. Now, the number of hands they play out of every 10 at hands on average, that would tell us whether or not they were loose aggressive or tight aggressive. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Strategy on Game Theory. I'm Christiana for Card Player TV.